We serve an awesome God. He's continually showing us and giving us opportunity to be faithful, to show ourselves approved by Him. When we try to do His work, we strive to do His will. So we, we started out last week regarding the power of prayer. That was part one. Again, I told you last week God had been really prompting me to preach this again, and I didn't want to do it because it's like I just I just preached this. He's like, well, they ain't got it yet. <laughs> I'm like, what? He's like, they ain't got it yet. Because there's too much happening that if they only pray, we can squash it. I'm like, wow. So what is it, Lord? Well, they need to know the power that's within them and the abilities that they have through the Holy Spirit to move mountains, to cross rivers, to defeat the enemy. They ain't never going to do it if they don't do right. So I'm like, all right, you the boss. I'm just your servant. So we're going to end this up. This is prayer, power of prayer. This is part two. Last week we dealt with and discussed the effectual prayer. The need for constant communication with God in order for effectual prayer to be successful there have to be conditions that need to be met. Say that. Conditions. So we're going to deal with the conditions of successful prayer. We, we talked about it last week. The first prayer you learn when you're, a, when you're a child, when you're a kid, when you're little. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. We all learn that. When do we lose the enthusiasm of that little prayer as we grew up and experienced real life? Do we stop asking the Lord to watch over us while we sleep? You know, as a child, you just do things because you know it's going to happen. And that's why God, Jesus, would always tell them, don't, don't, don't keep these little ones from me. Such is the kingdom of heaven. These ones who unashamedly believe. What's wrong with us? There's five conditions that need to be met if you want your prayer to be successful. We're going to give them to you today. Let's start it out. Second Chronicles 7, 14. This is just the anchor scripture. This ain't the condition. This is the anchor. But this holds so much in this scripture right here. For us as children of God. God says, if my people who are called by my name. Don't call yourself a Christian if you don't act like Christ. Oh. If you're called by my name, you have to humble yourself. Quit thinking of yourself as the almighty end all be all. Pray. Seek my face. Look for God. He's not hard to be found, child of God. Turn from your wicked ways. Oh, I don't see him. Oh, really? <laughs> Turn from your wicked ways. Then I'll hear from heaven. Then I'll forgive their sin. Then I will heal their land. You want to know what's wrong with our country? People ain't praying. People ain't searching. They rather listen to anybody and everybody that's got a voice, 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 except for God. And we 
we in trouble. Y'all know I do not talk about elections. I don't deal with voting. Y'all vote whoever God tells you to vote. But we got one coming up today, and it's going to be like, ooh. Yeah. The Bible. Did I tell you about the song last week? Well, no, I think I did it during, during Bible study. I'll say it. I don't care. Clowns to the left of me. Jokers to the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you. Come on! Come on! Come on! I ain't afraid. I ain't afraid. I don't care. You better pray. Because somebody's going to be leading this country, and if you ain't praying, you're in trouble. Come on, Pastor. Let's talk about success. <laughs> I think anyone who ever goes into a venture wants to be successful in what they do. Yes. Amen. You don't want to go into something with half-heartedness or you know that, 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 that double mind that it ain't gonna happen, you ain't gonna get it, it ain't gonna work. Success means to have a favorable or desired outcome. You should already have painted it on the canvas of your imagination exactly what it is that you want to do. Exactly where it is you want to go. Exactly how you need to get there. To obtain a desired object or end. Don't treat your prayer to God like the casino. I know I keep saying that, but it's so true. We just gamble with God. Maybe he will and maybe he won't. Maybe, 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 maybe. Where's your hope? Where's your trust? Where's your faith? If you ain't using it, you'll never be successful. You will never succeed in what God wants you to do. Where he wants to take you. Oh, come on. So let's deal with these five conditions. I got a lot of scripture, so you better write them down. First one is contrition, which is feeling or showing sorrow and remorse for a sin or shortcoming. If I regard iniquity in my heart, which is sin, the Lord will not hear me. Period. Right. Period. You can boo-hoo and cry and lot of love all you want. Are you sorry for what you do? Or do you just do it and go, oh, well, I'll just confess it, be all right. God's cool. He loves me. Really? So there's some scripture. Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is close to those whose hearts are breaking. He rescues those who are humbly sorry for their sins. Are you really sorry when you do something wrong? Now, you know when you was a kid, you got caught by mom or dad doing something. Were you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Were you really sorry that you did it or was you sorry you got caught? <laughs> you ain't gonna worry about getting caught by, by, by God. He already know you're gonna do it before you do it. So you have already been caught. Are you sorry that you did it? I, I've, that, I, I've been broken down. Broken. Because I know I did something. I know God was not pleased. And it hurt me. I did something to my wife one time. And it hurt me so bad I cried. She ain't cried. I did. Because it was wrong. That's sorrow. Psalms 51, 17 says, My sacrifice, oh God, is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. He's looking for us to be sorrowful for the things we do. You want to be successful? Hebrews 12.1 Therefore, 
since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Honey, let me tell you something. You got to go through. Well, I hear you. That's pretty good. Well, let the least little thing keep us from doing what God wants us to do. Yes, yes, yes. I heard that too. We'll even let some big stuff keep us from doing what God says to do. Because we think, oh, well, you know, I can't do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to be here. I got to be there. God says, I've given you a job to do. How come you're not doing it? <clears throat> you, you, you hurt me this morning, but it's okay. I love you. I don't, have, I don't really know the exact scripture, but I can tell you what it talks about. He said, you need to forsake your mother, your father, your yes. children. You need to forsake everything and follow me. Sometimes that's cruel. Because you know your children are hurting. You know your mom and dad are hurting. You know there's things that have to be done. You know you have to be there. God says, listen. You want to be successful? You want your prayer answered? You better seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all the other things will be added up to you. Come on now. Huh? Yes. All right, I got you. <laughs> Number two is wholeheartedness. Marked by unconditional commitment, unswerving devotion, and unreserved enthusiasm. Quit sitting back on God. Anybody ever been to Ohio State football game? Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, it's awesome, isn't it? You're sitting there before the game and the band comes out and they march you down the field and oh, you, can feel, you can feel the stadium rock. You yeah. can feel it move. It's like, whoa! And everybody says, ah! <laughs> woo -hoo! And then we come to church and go, oh, thank you, Jesus. Yep. Yep. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> Where are your enthusiasm? How state can't get you nowhere. Say it again. Say it again. Yes. Can't get you nowhere. Psalms 111, verse 1. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. Where those who are right with God gathered together, we come to church. And in the meeting of the people, oh, come on. What do you think we're doing here? I remember when I was in the world, Sunday was my day to go fishing. <laughs> I went to the holy bank of the Allen Creek. <laughs> Hoover Dam Church. <laughs> yeah, it was funny, wasn't it? It's the truth, huh? You ain't lying. But I learned when you cannot get glory unless you're feeding off of one another, unless we're listening to one another's testimonies, unless we're seeing each other one another. We have to be able to lift each other up. Am I a brother's keeper? Yes, I am! Yes. Yes. Psalms 119, verse 10. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. Father, keep my mind geared towards you, so that when you tell me something, I'm going to do it. I don't have to like it. I got to do it. I don't have to understand it. I got to do it. Jeremiah 29, 13. 
and you will seek this God. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. You, I don't want to hear, oh, I can't hear from God. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. If you can't hear from God, it ain't in his, the problem ain't in his end. Amen. The problem is at your end. It's your receptors that's all jacked up and you need to get them right. Because if you seek him with your whole heart, he tells you, I'll be found. Amen. And there's nothing I won't do. Amen. Oh, man. Come on, Lord. I feel you. Number three is faith. Yes. It's firm belief in something for which there is no proof. Something that is believed, especially with strong conviction. We learn this. Faith is acting as if it were so. Even when it appears not to be so. In order for it to be so. Because it is so. Based on the word of God. That's, that's, that's faith wrapped up in a nutshell. Either you're going to believe or you're not. Either you're going to trust or you're not. You want to be successful in the prayer you pray. You know you got things to pray for. We talked about it last week. Two types of prayer. There's the one prayer you go, Lord, I'm giving it to you. Yes. Yes. I want you to handle it because you said you would. Here you go. Then I go, I trust you, Lord, to handle it. Now, I ain't putting no time constraint on you, Lord. I ain't telling you how to do it. I ain't telling you when to do it. You just do it. And you trust and believe God. Then there's that one that, Lord, I need this for me. And I ain't going to quit praying and bugging you until it's done. I'm just like that woman that went before the judge. She just kept on bugging and pestering and bugging and pestering. I need for me. What Jesus say? I ain't never found faith like this so much more in, Egypt, in, in, in Israel. And, and when I come, is, is there going to be this type of faith? You better pray until something happens. But you need to know the difference between the one you give to him and the one you take. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. It doesn't matter what it looks like. If you trust and believe God, you know God's going to work it out. Quit looking at things as though they ain't going to happen. Paint it on the canvas of your imagination and watch God work. I keep hearing this, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Well, honey, won't he do it? I believe he will. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for. And it's assurance, not insurance, assurance about what we do not see. I have a need. And we and Michelle, we've been talking about it. God's already given me the plan on what I need to do. I, I, I'm, I'm specific. I'm specific. This is what I want. And I, Lord, <laughs> you won't give me what I want because you made a promise. Therefore, why should I take anything less? Say that. Amen. If I'm assured through my faith, God will give me the desires of my heart. Why? Because I'm going to delight myself in him. I'm going to make him so happy with me, he's going to fall over laughing. <laughs> that's my boy. That's my boy. Look at him. You're right. Mark 11, 22 to 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have 
faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things that you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. You will have them. Well, I've been praying, I've been praying, and I ain't got it yet, really? So you're just going to give up and stop? Or you think it's in your time? See God's time, and when He makes it right, honey, I'm gonna tell you something. What you thinking about? Way better than that. Yeah, way, better. way better than that. God knows exactly what He's doing. Number three is faith. Number four is righteousness. This is a big one. It's acting in accord with divine or moral law. Free from guilt or sin. Having a right relationship with God ensures open communication and the ability to ask anything of God and know that he not only hears you but will grant your request. But you got to believe and you got to pray you got to unload that baggage you've been carrying around for far too long. <coughs> Unforgiveness. Hidden sin. Unrepentedness. Your own way. All that got to go. All that's got to go. I'll let the word speak for it. I ain't going to say it no more. Galatians 5.5 5. But we who live by the Spirit eagerly wait to receive by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. The righteousness, the right relationship. We earnestly wait and know that God has a way for us to succeed. Ephesians 4.24 you must become a new person and be God-like. Then you will be made right with God and have a true holy life. You got to get rid of that junk. I had to get rid of something before I came up here today. I was not happy. I had a moment Let's put it that way. Now I let the enemy try to mess me up. He's a liar. He's a liar. God's will will be done no matter what he tries to do. He will put people in your pathways that will help you to understand that he's got it and you ain't got to worry about it. See, we, we put ourselves in too much junk. I know I do sometimes. I think I got to carry the whole load on my shoulder. And God is telling me, your shoulder ain't that big. <laughs> Amen. Ain't that big. I know what I'm doing. All you got to do is listen to me. James 5, 16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. I want to stop right there. When talks about confessing your sins to each other, watch who you talk to. Amen. 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 Yes. 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 Don't just talk to anybody. Number one, you better talk to somebody you know can get a prayer through. Amen. <laughs> yeah. And somebody who will know how to take what you've got and give it to God and leave it alone. Amen. Before you know it, you done said something to somebody and half the church knows all about it. 
you know so and so had this problem and you guess what they told me after a while there ain't no church because it says then you pray for each other pray for each other the prayer of a righteous person is powerful watch <laughs> and effective powerful and effective successful I pray for you you pray for me you don't always need to know everything I'm going through I don't mind telling some of them Amen. but I rely upon your prayers for me because guess what I'm surely praying for you I'll call you all out by name Thank God I don't have a mega church. I'll be on <laughs> I'll be on my knees four hours trying to call out everybody's name. Lord, blah, 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 blah. Nah. But y'all, y'all got me. This is how it works. That's number four. The last one I think is one of the biggest ones that we deal with in order to be successful. And that's obedience. To follow the commands or guidance of, to conform to or comply with. And here's the God's command is paramount in successfully having your prayers answered. Quit telling God, I can't do it. Or you may not verbally say it, but your actions prove it. Because you don't do what God said to do. And you want to put everything else before God. I hear you. Church is not an extracurricular activity. Oh. <laughs> I only come here because I ain't got nothing else to do. I don't do Bible study because I got this to do and that to do and this to do and that to do and the word of God is being told you what to do and you ain't there to hear it oh, you get me in trouble but I don't mind Jeremiah 7 23 but this is what I command them, saying, obey my voice. I command them saying, obey my voice. I command them saying, obey my voice. And I will be your God. You shall be my people. And walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. If you do what God says do, it will be well with you. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 6. And we will be ready to put, to punish every act of disobedience. This is what's more important. Once your obedience is complete. So we're so ready to tell somebody off or tell somebody about how bad they are, or tell somebody how sinful they are, or tell somebody what they need to do, or tell somebody how blah, 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 <laughs> And you ain't doing it yourself. What do they say about a person who lives in a glass house? <laughs> Once you learn about being obedient to God, you can help someone else. And you do it with love, and you do it with compassion, and you do it because God said do it, not just because you think they need to be told. Oh man, this is... I'm going to speak good tonight. Good. Amen. Acts 5, verses 30 to 32. The God of our ancestors brought Jesus back to life again after you had killed him by hanging him on a cross. 
Then with mighty power, God exalted him to be a prince and savior. So that the people of Israel would have an opportunity for repentance. And for their sins to be forgiven. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit who is given by God to all who obey him. We all know what Jesus did for us. You think he did it just because he didn't have nothing else better to do? We've been given instructions. We've been given directions. And it's up to us to be obedient and to follow them. God tells you to do something, honey, you better do it. I ran for 15 years. I was not going to be a pastor. I was not. <laughs> oh, no. God said, all right. You bad. You got this nice job. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> you traveling, making money? Let's get rid of that. All right, Lord, well, I got another job. I, I got skills. Go get me another job. See, the first job, he just shut down the department. I go get another job. Oh, you bad? Let's close the whole company down. I went, I'll surrender. <laughs> whatever you want, whatever you say, I'll surrender. You almighty God. If you gonna shut down the whole company, oh Lord, you think that who, who was it got thrown in the belly of the fish? Jonah. Shit, I was a Jonah. <laughs> he like, all right, <laughs> you bad. Let's see you now. We gonna we gonna put everybody out of work. <laughs> he did, and I'm like, oh man been doing this and I've been loving it. Been it ain't been easy. Been tough. But God is good. He is righteous. He's forgiving. He's loving. He's strong. He knows what's going on. He helps. He blesses. He uplifts. He glorifies. Yeah! Hallelujah! I can't do nothing but obey him. No matter what you think, is what he says. There are these five conditions will cause you to be successful. Contrition, heartedness, faith, righteousness, and obedience. You do those. It's a guarantee. I gave you his word. It's a guarantee when you pray, you're going to be successful. Everything you ask for will be done. Amen. Amen. I ain't say it. The word of God says. Amen. Amen. All right, my pastor said, I ain't sneak into your house and write it in your Bible. <laughs> it's there. All you got to do is follow it. Make a cake and don't know what to do with the ingredients or the directions. I ain't eating it. <laughs> you can throw all the frosting you want on that bad boy. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Meeting these conditions ensures successful results, results to prayer. We've had some things that's been going on, but this congregation has been bad. I ain't going to lie. Tough, hard. But guess what? Y'all still here. Amen. You ain't gave up. Prayer works. You got to use it. Holy Spirit's been given to you for you to fight against the enemy. And allow God to open up areas and avenues in your life you did not know existed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he's real. Yes, he, is. Yes. And he loves you so. 
be successful in this prayer life. I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of all the stuff I keep hearing. And it's like, Lord, when are you going to let us be delivered from this? And he goes, well, when they're going to pray right. And I'm like, okay, I, I did that. When they're going to act right. When they humble themselves and get rid of the sin and seek my face, I'm going to move. When they quit doing it their way, I'm going to move. When they quit believing in everything somebody else tells them and start believing what I tell them, then I'm going to move. I love you, Lord. Love how you talk to me. You all right. You don't may think I'm crazy because I'm talking to you silly, but I'm talking to God. Amen. Amen. I'm not that smart. He talks to me to tell you what to do. And don't think I right, don't apply to me too, because every word that comes out of my mouth applies to me too. Absolutely. I am not exempt from doing the will of God. So you must too. Pray because you've got power in your prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen.